some exciting names there, a couple of surprises, and of course some amazing veterans too. We do have uh, some of the Blackfern squad members join us today at the back of the room as well. But let's get into our panel discussion. This is the fun part. Uh, can I invite up to stage, please, Assistant Coach Wesley Clark, Captain Ruahe Dumont, and newcomer Ruby Tui. Come on up to the stage. It's a do-it-yourself, grab-the-stools routine today. Testing, great. Well, firstly, I'd love to start with Ruahe, uh, who's sitting with me to my left, also a college rifles girl, which is one of the best women's clubs in New Zealand, by the way. Say it louder. <laughs> oh my gosh, goodness, you are captain. Um, I I'm wondering if this is a surprise and how the call went. Tell me all about it. Yeah. It is a surprise. Um, when I was told um, by, by our coaches, I was shocked and I actually thought it was a joke um, because I was in complete disbelief and I felt real blindsided, I guess. Um, and thankfully, um, they told me like a week before this announcement, so I've had a lot of time to kind of sit in these feelings and uh, come to terms with the fact that I have the honour of, you know, captaining this prestigious team with so much legacy, with so much mana. Um, I think of the leaders that have gone before me, the likes of Dr. Farah Palmer, um, Fialfa Mosili, Les Alda, to name a few. And I don't really know if I quite reach the pinnacle or the esteem that I see them in. Um, so it's a massive challenge, a challenge that I'm willing to take. Um, but more importantly, I feel honoured to represent my club, to represent my province, um, Auckland, and to represent my whānau. I think we've just seen an example of the humility that many of the Black Ferns have because I've watched you do a hey and you do deserve this position. Um, you are a great leader on and off the field. And, and talking about leadership and the style that you'll bring to this, uh, you know, having the honour of having Farah as my captain. She was a captain who um, was collaborative, uh, set the team up to um, be able to contribute to a lot of our leadership decisions. Rochelle Martin was a captain who led on the field and was the most exceptional number eight uh, in the game, male and female. So I'm interested in the type of leadership that you will bring to the Black Ferns. To be honest, I actually have no idea, <laughs> to, to be quite honest with you. Um, but I know uh, when I play, I, I like to lead through my actions. Um, I don't really like to say too much. I think sometimes when people say too much and there's too many words... It gets you got Ru that. Ruby Tui to do that for you this year. <laughs> Correct. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm hoping that um, I guess I can empower the, the girls around me to put their body on the line for each other um, and enjoy the rugby that we're about to play because it's not every day that you get to pull on a black jersey and represent your country. Um, yeah. And seriously, in New Zealand, first World Cup we've ever had here, we haven't played test rugby here uh, due to COVID for a wee while as well. I mean, that uh, must be huge considering your whānau and, and friends and family are going to come down. Yeah. I'm so excited for our debutantes that they get the opportunity to debut in New Zealand in front of their families. Um, for a lot of us, uh, you know, our games are always overseas and we rely on whānau waking up in the middle of the night to support us from afar and that always means a lot. But for our debutantes to have that rare opportunity to debut at home, uh, some of them in their home cities, um, in front of you know many members of their Fano. I'm so excited for them, and I'm so excited to be able to play in front of our fans, to play in front of um, you know the young school girls, uh, young club players, to hopefully inspire them to show that um, you know the, the heights that they can reach through rugby. And last question for you: Out of those debutants, um, what are you expecting from them? There's some pretty cool names there. Yeah, uh, energy and excitement, in all honesty. Um, it's going to be so exciting. Um, 
I can't wait for them to get the opportunity and take the opportunity and seize the opportunity. Awesome, awesome. Well, Wes, we'll go to you next. Um, I guess selecting this team must have been a completely different process. You've got a complete change in your coaching structure. Tell us about that. Thanks, Mel. Um, selection, can you hear me? Selection is always um, twofold. It's always a, a privilege. Um, but it's also difficult because you can't pick everyone, and a number of players have worked pretty hard this year, so uh, we always try and do it with respect. Um, so, yeah, exhaustive process. It ended up at um, Sir Graham Henry's house for two days, um, but it started with looking at footage uh, from the end of your tour, and then obviously some players put their hands up through Opiki. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, um, and, you know, and then, of course, there were camps, and uh, we've, we've, we've got to change the way we play probably this year. Um, so, you know, those camps in particular, we're looking for athletes that can play the game plan that we're looking uh, to produce at the World Cup. Wayne Smith to Graham Henry, to huge names uh, to come in and coach alongside you. Tell us a little more about what they've been offering in the short time they've been there. Apart from the humour from Sir Graham Henry. <laughs> I won't talk about that. Um, look, it's special. It's special for me as a, as a coach, obviously, and for Whitney and for Bunce as well, because you've got a couple of guys here with a, a wealth of knowledge and a massive willingness to share it. I think it's pretty important to recognise that, um, you know, they didn't apply for any roles. They actually offered to help the Black Ferns. So everything they're doing comes from a place of genuinely wanting to help the team be better, and I think that's translated really easily onto the field with the players as well. Um, Smithy's the professor. I'm finding out more and more that there's a really good reason for that. Um, he writes me a thesis almost every day. Um, so, you know, massive knowledge and, and just so open. Like I said, we ended up at Ted's house. Um, so it's been, it's been really special. And I think, like I, like I insinuated before, we've got to probably change how we're doing things um, on the field. So um, having their experience and their still creativity um, and how they want to do those things has, has been really exciting. Thank you. Um, and uh, this is the question I've been asked to ask you. And I know that this isn't the most intelligent question for me to ask, but I'm going to. How important is this tournament for World Cup preparation? <laughs> we haven't played much, that's why, you know. We oh, need Melody, to get it's there. very important. <laughs> um, look, it's, it's actually critical. There's, there's a number of reasons. So firstly, we've got to get New Zealand behind us. So we're keen to put on a good show out there and get people to take an interest in the women's game and, and us playing a brand of footy that's going to excite people. So they want to come to the World Cup later in the year. Uh, from a coaching perspective, um, I've said twice now, we've got to change how we do things. So it gives us an opportunity against quality opposition to try some of those things. Some will fail, some will go good. Uh, so from a coaching perspective, just critical. And then lastly, from a player's perspective, they've got to push for World, Club, uh, World Cup spots. So opportunity for players to show that they can play that game plan and put their best foot forward. Thank you. And uh, a reminder, Wayne Smith has actually had a lot to do with women's rugby over the years. Obviously, uh, Laurie O'Reilly's connection with... Him. He was also with the squad in 1997, um, and I love Wayne Smith because my coach, Daryl Suisa, tried to dump me that year, and Wayne said no, so he's my favourite coach. <laughs> anyway, enough about me, Ruby. Ruby, how cool is this? I mean, I've been talking to you about 15s for ages, because you are a specialist sevens player. Ten years, sevens. What's happened? Why, why the, what, the decision now? Tell us about it. I've got to be careful how I answer this. If I'm honest, I just got sick of their jokes, eh? They're just getting really repetitive. Um, but nah, look, this is um, everybody, even all of us sevens players, our first rugby is 15s. You don't play women's rugby in this country, you go down, you play club, you play 15s. Um, it's, it's always the beginning of the dream. Um, and yeah, I had to put the dream on hold for a decade. But um, it's, it's been a dream since I first started down in Canterbury. I've always had so much respect um, you know, for this team, it's our namesake team, the Sevens namesake team, um, and I have had you on my back, lots of 15s players on my back for a long time now, um, and I do want to mention too, um, there's amazing leaders in the 15s environment, and Lou or Ruahe is definitely one of them, and there's people that just walk into a room, and they know who they are, and they're kind, and they're good people, and Lou is one of those people, so it's actually a huge honour to be able to Follow her into better woman on many talents. She's fluent and surreal. She's a very intelligent rugby player. So I'm, I'm so excited for this new exciting chapter for the Black Ferns. And she's a lawyer too, by the way. Yeah. I tell you, these Black Ferns, compared to the All Blacks, jeez, I tell you. Um, one thing you told me in the office before, which whoa, whoa, whoa. really... 
<laughs> oh, that, oh, that thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Which interested me was that actually, I, I said to you, what about the Commonwealth Games and Sevens World Cup? But you're focusing on 15s. Yeah, huge decision. Um, and it was actually, if I'm honest, quite emotional watching the girls over in Canada, um, you know, oh, I would have done this, all the rest of it. Um, but what a dilemma to be in. There's two amazing New Zealand national rugby teams in this country, and I, I'm, I'm up there with all of them, and I can't choose. Like, it's such a hard decision. And I think for this year, a home World Cup... Mel, if I get to just run water on for Lou, like, I'll be happy, you know? Like, I, I just want to be a part of this huge historic moment. And, and the girls got it. It's no, no problem. Um, but, I, yeah, I will remind the country, New Zealand's not a... doesn't have a sport that's a, a male national sport. Rugby isn't the, for the males in the country. Rugby is New Zealand's national sport. It's not the men's sport of New Zealand. It's the national sport of this country. So if you haven't turned your neck at the calendar for this year, you're living under a rock or something, or you need new jokes around you, because this year is going to be the most amazing year for the national sport of New Zealand. And I want to thank everybody for coming here today, everybody for tuning in, because with your help, we're going to try and change the world. But we can't do it without New Zealand, because this is our national sport. So that's the thing about interviewing Ruby, like you get these questions and she answers them all in one answer anyway. So I'm going to throw one last thing out to you. You are a mongrel. You're selected on the wing. Oh, here we I go. reckon you should be a flanker. <laughs> so does Anna Richard. So does all the legends of the game. Um, but to be honest, I think this year, like I'm named in the squad and it's a huge honour, but I'm not going to guarantee anything. Wherever Wes Smithy with his random game plans puts me, that's where I'm going. That's um, whatever role I have to serve the team, that's all I'm doing. If it's massaging loose feet every night, that's my role. Like, whatever the team needs, that's where I'm going. Awesome. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please give them the hand. It's fantastic to hear from the Wes, Ruby, and our host.